newbies, what if I said to you there is a way for you to be able to get into FPV and have a button that you can press that will instantly pause time and stop bad things from happening to you? That's right. Betaflight 4.6 is sort of here. And in it, it brings a raft of improvements. And two of them is a really special button that will pause time and stop you plowing into the earth, as we can see from this video here. Let's first of all go into the workshop and have a look at how you would set it up on your quad, how you would flash 4.6, how you would set this button up, and then we'll come back out to the field and we'll have a look at just how effective it is. Okay, so we are going to start by going into Betafly and <clears throat> we're going to show you how you would flash to Betafly 4.6. So there is a few prerequisites that I need to mention here. Number one is that Betafly 4.6 is not a public release. It is still technically classed as like a beta release. There's still bugs in it. It's not even at the stage where it's at a release candidate stage, which means that there may be bugs. It may not perform as you would expect. It may result in crashes or unexpected behavior. So what I'm trying to say is use it at your own risk. Just be aware of those risks before you do. My advice to anybody would be wait for this to come out as a public release. However, I'm going to make this video now so that you have it all available to you to either choose now or later on. So first of all, you go into the normal Betaflight configurator and you can hit auto detect or you can find it from the list down there now as standard yours will say release in the version and it'll only give you 4.5.1 if we then change that to release uh, sorry to development that will then give us the option to download beautifully 4.6 So we can see there, look, it's not even in release candidate stage. It is just in development stage. So what you then need to do is you need to scroll down to the box that's detailed other options. And in there, what you need to do is you need to type the word hold. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add altitude hold by just clicking it and it adds it to that list and then we're going to click position hold and that adds that to that list as well gps which obviously is going to be a prerequisite to this is already selected you don't need anything else you you then just hit load firmware online and if you look at the little icon or progress bar, should I say, you can see that the firmware is now being built. What I will do now is I will unplug my um, flight controller. I'll press the DFU button and I'll hold it and I'll plug it back in and it'll put it into DFU mode, as you can see at the bottom. You may need to use the Impulse RC driver fixer if you haven't got a boot button. And then you just click flash firmware and it'll flash the firmware and it's as easy as that to flash it what we then need to do sorry this is where you sorry this is where you have to accept all the warnings to say the firmware may not work it may not be flyable it may destroy all your equipment and your entire life and you'll never be able to uh, smile in public ever again and i'm not going to say that it won't do that because i don't want that on my shoulders so do use at your own risk what I will say is I have been flying it now for over a week and I've got it on two different quads and I've got it without a problem. So once you say it's programming is successful, all you then need to do is just unplug the flight controller and replug it in. But you need to open, you need to close this configurator down and you need to go to a website using a Chrome based browser that's called appapp.betaflight.com com and that will look something a little bit like this so it's a very similar interface it is a web-based interface you can download the application 
to your PC. And then obviously every time you open it, it will say this application needs to be updated or maybe it won't. But generally speaking, if it does, that's how it does it. Then what you need to do is up at the top here where it says select your device. Say I can't find my USB and it'll give you a list of all USBs plugged in. Anything that's Betaflight related, it'll tell you. And as you can see, once we've logged in to Betaflight, everything looks exactly the same, albeit it does have a slightly brighter interface. Now, what I need to do is just plug in my controller and my and a battery into my Icon RC, and I'll show you how we set it up. Okay, so we've got the Icon, or sorry, the Avion RC Icon plugged in to Betaflight 4.6, Configurator 11. My controller is turned on and the quad is powered, which means that we will be able to select things in the receiver tab because I, like an idiot, I didn't wire it up to the 3.3 volt one. So as we go down to the modes tab, you can then see within this modes tab how I've set it up. Now, if you look on alt hold and position hold, they're both set to aux three. And if you look, they're both set to the same angle of um, what's what I'm looking for here? Connectivity. So as I turn my controller on now and I press my AUX3 button into the right position, it will then activate both position hold and altitude hold at exactly the same time. And we can see that any second now. And there we go. We've activated position hold and altitude hold at the same time. What does that mean? So position hold will hold your position relative to the ground, but you can still go up and you can still go down with your throttle stick. Altitude hold will not allow you to go up or down with your throttle stick, but will allow you to fly around using the right stick. So for new pilots who have struggled to control their altitude, this is ideal for them. You can set them independently as well. So it doesn't have to be a panic button like I've set it up here. It can be that you've got altitude hold on one and position hold on another. Some experienced pilots may need this, but this is certainly phenomenal, in my opinion, for newbie pilots. And the reason I'm going to get into when we look at some of the flight footage, I think you'll all be in hopeful agreement with me. So you can set it up either way. You can have it as a panic button like this, or you can have it as position hold on one and altitude hold on the other. If you're not sure which switch is which when it comes to the AUX, if you just hit the three position switch that you want, it'll come up on that screen and it said there, look AUX three. And then we come into here and look, we can see AUX three is selected there. So that's how we know that that's how we select it. And that is how you said oh sorry yeah if you can't see it just click on hide unused modes if it's not there in that list for you and you've already set it up for whatever reason click that and it'll expand the whole list down and it is as easy as that so let's head out to the flying field unfortunately i didn't record any audio while i was there so i'm gonna have to record it over sorry about that mainly because i didn't know if it would work it was a bit of a hunch that i had it should have worked, but I just wasn't sure if it did or not, so uh, I didn't record it. So let's head out to the field now. So you join me at a very snowy flying field today. Now, I didn't really didn't want to crash this. So I, I edge out into the field nice and slow. There's nobody about. I've got a spot with me. And I just edge out until I activate the button for the first time. There. And as you can see... There is a little bit of drift. You can still use the yaw stick left and right to have a look around. And it will bobble up and down a little bit. Now, I only had eight satellites. But if we have a look at the stick cam, you can see that I was frantically showing you that there was literally no inputs from me. And it, like I said, there is a tiny little bit of drift, but we're using a development version. And again, I'll hit the, the switch there. And again, it just as we're upside down looking and, and again it just holds us like i said there is a little bit of bobble there is a little bit of movement it's not going to be a hundred percent precise especially with the gps that i'm using so i'm only using a nano m10 from flyfish it's a brilliant brilliant one it picks GPS up the signal on. really quickly it doesn't have a barometer in it so that means obviously 
it's not going to be quite as accurate as if you had one with a barometer in. But ultimately, this is a lightweight build, and I figured if anything was going to crash, I'd like it to be a much lighter weight version of a quad than a really heavy one. And uh, I, I do have a little bit of fun as I'm still out here to enjoy myself as well. But we can see that even when you're upside down or you, you're low to the ground, when you hit that button, and again, you can see on the um, stick cam that when you hit the button, no matter what you do, nothing on the sticks will, will change where you are. It takes a, a second or so to calm down. So if you're in a really tight spot and you want like a precision stop, this is probably not going to work massively well. But that said, if you waited for 20 satellites and you had something with the barometer in, the chances it probably would be a little bit more accurate. But overall, if you are new to FPV and either you cannot control your altitude or you want something like a panic button that will stop you crashing. So if you're upside down, if, you're, if you've tried FPV and every time you do something, you get it wrong and you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you just plow it into the field or, or wherever. And you said, oh, I wish there was a button that I could press. If I got it wrong, if I made a mistake, I could just press this button and it would just pause everything for me. Well, this is that button. I believe the DJI FPV had something very similar. And that would be something that I used to recommend to newbies getting into the hobby. Get the DJI FPV if you've got zero FPV um, experience whatsoever and you don't know what you're doing and you've got nobody else to help you. That would be something that would be ideal for you. But now we've got this on Betaflight 4.6 and all you need is a $10 Timer uh, GPS module. There really is no reason to recommend that anymore. This is only going to get better as it goes on. Um, as well as, a, like I say, I'm not using a particularly brilliant GPS module here. So it can all be improved. It can all be refined. But certainly for the for the start of the technology, it's brilliant. And like I say, if you are a newbie and you do want to get into it, this is really going to help you. And again, we can just see it. GPS one last activation on. here. And it just, just stops us from hitting the ground. And he's really, really good. I think everybody watching this video can agree that that is absolutely a game-changing option for newbies. If you can't control your altitude, if you can't control your position, if you can't control both, if you need a panic button, Beta Flight 4.6 will open the door to more and more newbies joining. And that, from my point of view, is brilliant because I used to be one. I'm here to help newbies and inexperienced pilots. I know that there are certain experienced pilots that could actually benefit from this as well because we all panic every now and again. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to set it up on every one of my quads, but I'm certainly going to leave it on this one. And as the technology develops, we'll come back and we'll revisit it. And the other point I want to make dead quick is Beta Flight 4.6 flies really, really well, but please use it at your own risk. Just remember that. Speaking of remembering that, do you remember this video in the end screen right now? Go watch it again.